I can do a couple of announcements about what's going on in viewer land, and then uh, we can throw things open for uh, if anybody else has updates or just general questions. Um, we have the, hopefully the next promotion viewer is going to be uh, the 360 plus simplified cash. Um, that is out in an RC now. If we can get enough user hours against it and it passes muster before it gets too close to the holidays, then we uh, may be able to promote it this year. Um, if those conditions aren't met, then it's more likely to go into early uh, early next year. So we'll just have to see how that goes. Um, a lot of work going on with the performance improvements viewer. Um, we're seeing some some really nice uh, boosts on that, um, but that is a little farther from release. We're trying to get it in a uh, stable enough state that it could be ready for an RC, um, you know, hopefully soon. But uh, you know, realistically, timing on that is probably going to be getting into January somewhere. Um, and again, it depends on how things go in in QA. I think those are the big things from a uh, kind of viewer release perspective. Uh, anybody else have updates? Uh, Ryder, Mojo? Uh, none from me, aside from the uh, the uh... Uh, tools upgrade uh, simulator is going to be on all RCs next week. Uh, you know, for, for me, uh, just, you know, the team's been doing a tremendous job on uh, the performance effort. That's where our focus is at the moment. Um, the, you know, uh, Beck, I remember you had something on your viewer that I think we're going to take some inspiration from as well so um we're not done i guess is my point um we're gonna keep going and, and try and uh make sure performance is good across um all types of devices uh well, i should say all types of um uh, hardware so uh, you know i think there's there's definitely you know questions about well, where we go next um, you know, we have a plan that we've been putting together. I think we're going to uh, um, execute on some other interesting improvements and, you know, uh, always looking for feedback as to kind of where, where we should be putting our time. So that's it. Oh, yeah, we didn't ask AP if he had anything to contribute either. Did you have something you wanted to throw in there? Uh, nope, just please check out the project viewer and submit bugs. What's going on in third party viewer land? Any new releases or interesting features underway? So, Beck, you're asking about login. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we did two roles and um, we had some issues uh, mainly with, with bots, and so we pulled it back. So we're, uh, we're, we're very close, but um, um, we, on uh, doing an upgrade, mainly for internal reasons, you know, we're trying to remove some 
old code and replace it with a much shinier code. But uh, apologies to the community on kind of our any missteps we've made there. So coffee, my understanding is you're saying um, you'd like to be able to integrate your own look and feel for the search, and so you'd like a different blob result? OK. Um, well, let me make a note of it, and we'll, we'll talk with the viewer team. We, you know, we did the, the viewer facelift, and um, but we haven't, you know, one thing that's in the works is that we're, we're looking at the viewer results and just making sure that uh, viewer results are relevant. Um, so we got a project ahead to do that. And with that, maybe we can think about how we deliver the payload. Uh, Beck, are you waiting for a fix on our side for Mac Media, or this is an issue that you're running into on your end? Okay. Uh, and I've mentioned it in other meetings, uh, but wanted to make sure everybody's aware of IMD email changes coming in and uh, that preference and uh, the viewer will stop working in about a week uh, and folks will get redirected to the website. Uh, that preference being under uh, chat, there's a checkbox for email me IMs when I'm offline. It won't crash the viewer. You'll get a, uh, when you click OK um, on preferences, if, if you've tried to change that setting, the server will send you an IM um, telling you to go to the website to change that setting.
Has anybody been using the performance viewer? Oh, uh, uh, which, which frame stall? The media one? Okay, and to answer Pantera's question, um, there's no change to the caps, uh, uh, so that they both count. together just like they they used to um it just uh so if you have them both on they both count um i'm pretty sure if you have group notices off um then you don't get penalized for the caps that would have gone to group notices Uh, Beck, do you have a slur for where you're seeing the media frame stall? Because I've been testing on a region that has uh, some media playing and, and haven't been seeing it lately. Okay, yeah, there are some frame stalls uh, that are still happening um, that happen every few frames, and they're coming from the most unlikely of places. Uh, we might not get to those this year, um, but hope to get to them early next year. Like one of those places is the callback for uh, converting a texture to a brightness darkness bump map. Um, sometimes stalls. So if you've got a bunch of those in the scene and they're paging in and out, you'll see that. You'll see like every few frames there's a 24 millisecond stall. Yeah, it's been it's been really hard to not just keep trying to optimize everything, but <laughs> we really need to stop breaking things and ship what we've done so far. Well, what's time to break new things after it ships though? <laughs> yeah, like the 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 kind of bugs that we're looking at right now are um, things like um, keyboard layout not uh, changing when you try to change your keyboard layout and uh, the window not showing up uh, where it was last time you closed the viewer and um, the bounding boxes for uh, avatars are uh, not correct. Uh, so uh, we're, we're, we're focusing on non-performance stuff now just to make sure that all the performance improvements haven't created bugs that make the experience worse.
think the Linden holiday is uh, December 24th through January 3rd. Um, probably a fair number of people will be out earlier in that uh, week of the 24th, but uh, that's the official dates. I think that question is for Veer, the release freeze is the 20th. Release, you mean release freeze for Viewer? Uh, I'm not sure we have a designated date, but I mean, basically the closer it's getting to the 24th, the less likely we're going to be to promote a Viewer. Oh, uh, freeze in terms of like when uh, when other updates, you know, when when we like other people to be shipping updates. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. We haven't really talked about uh, hard dates, but I mean that sounds reasonable. It's generally you just don't want to put stuff out right before uh, everybody runs off for the holidays because it's hard to fix things then. Uh, no, nothing new on viewer-based AOs. It's uh, it's one of the things that we've discussed, and it's in the you know possible future work pile, but uh, nothing recent. Uh, on the glod front, um, would it be terrible if we threw glod over the fence to the TBV viewers and just said, if you want to use glod, go get Firestorm or similar? I mean, open question. I don't know how much that messes up uh, y'all's development process. Yeah, the only cases I've seen so far have to do with, um, you know, having pretty low triangle counts, um, and you know, trying to trying to get things down to extremely low counts isn't isn't really the point of the LODs, right? It's mostly just so you can get down to something reasonable. Um, but uh, yeah, if there's not if there's not a dramatic difference, the the likelihood is that we're gonna drop support for glod you know it's an old it's an old library it's incompatible with the 
the GL settings that we're you know looking to use for the performance viewer. So um, yeah, if there's uh, kind of strong stop the presses reasons why we really need to keep it, then uh, any any word along those lines would be helpful. Yeah, uh, Beck, we haven't really looked at abstracting that. Um, I think if you know if we get to the point where there's significant number of different libraries that we want to include support for, we might work to uh, might work to generalize it more. Did you see the question about the cache viewer? Oh, how many hours do we need? Uh, that's a, more of a question for QA, I think, what they're normally looking for. Do you have anybody here? Yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, not sure. I'll see if I can get, a, get anybody to comment on that while the meeting's on, and then I'll let you know if I hear. Yeah, thanks for the clear clarification, Beck. That's pretty much what I thought. Um, so, so yeah, ab abstracting behind a plugin architecture would make that easier because then it'd just be something that's cleanly on the other side of an interface that we don't ship, but you do. Um, 
and I'm not sure exactly what that interface looks like right now. Um, and I'd like to apologize in advance for all the rigged mesh rendering shuffling <laughs> and and the removal of all of the uh, no shader stuff that uh, that Euclid did. Uh, there's this merge is not going to be fun. Yeah, I think we've been delving into some corners that we haven't touched in quite a while. Right, and the metrics, uh, some of the render pipe metrics aren't even accurate anymore, like the triangle count, because uh, turns out counting the number of triangles was a significant part of the frame, the way it was implemented. You mean the triangle counts as displayed in the um, stats floater? Yeah, uh, the render info metrics and the um, and the triangle count, like the k tries per frame, k tries per second, on the statistics bar. Uh, I don't think that's counting the shadow passes anymore. So it's more of a how many triangles are in the scene, not how many triangles are being rendered. Same thing with the uh, memory usage. We stopped tracking um, memory usage, so now all those numbers are zero. Because um, there was a bunch of overhead, like every time there was an alloc, something was trying to reach into a statistics tracker and lock it. Yeah, at the places that I could find that were lock free um, still did very expensive things to uh, process the metrics once per frame, uh, particularly the the fast timers. Yeah, it was one of those things where 
we had to make a call if we were going to try to optimize our built-in metrics and keep maintaining them or just shift to using external tools like Tracy and Insight. And the better option by far is to just go ahead and use external tools that you can compile out. So not so you don't make everybody run a profiler all the time. One of the other things we've been talking about performance related is uh, revisiting what the uh, default settings are. And I was wondering if uh, you guys had experience changing what those are on, on your viewers, because looking at the benchmark that we use and what the, the presets are in the feature table, seems like those could be a lot better. Uh, to elaborate on that, um, the uh, I have an Intel laptop um, that gets like uh, 20 frames a second, uh, and for some reason defaults to high ultra uh, because the the threshold on the benchmark that we run to to determine what um, preset to default to is uh, outdated. Um, but then if I turn off deferred rendering on that same laptop, um, I get double the frame rate. Um, so what I want to do is change those numbers so that uh, more machines default to mid or low than currently do. And yeah, the VRM usage is one that, that needs to be revisited too. I was just looking at that today. I'm pretty sure we have that on the list for future performance work. Yeah, and since it's defaults, that would be new users.
I don't I don't know if that's true for new users with Intel graphics chips. Which is really what I'm talking about. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but my impression is that people who buy laptops with Intel graphics chips don't really care about graphics. Yeah, I mean, of course, the futurist in me wants to say make deferred rendering run as well as non-deferred everywhere and then kill the deferred render pipe. But I'm not sure how realistic that is. It's also true that deferred isn't inherently better quality. I mean, it is in our viewer because of the way they're implemented, but you could do a very pretty looking uh, renderer and never use deferred if you wanted to. What do you think? new users are most turned away from in terms of visuals. I'd be curious to hear, you know, yeah, you know when I first uh, uh, set of life, I was like, oh, wow, this seems dated. And so we've been talking about, well, what do we do to address that? But this would be a great group of people to hear from about that. So you're saying that there's just many people who uh, can't view us with the right settings because they don't have the right hardware, or that the more than likely the their settings are wrong and they just haven't scaled the settings. Yeah, I'd love to see more. You know, even on the laptop I've got here, um, there's environments I think that could just could, could use a little bit more zing. Modernized lighting. Post -product. So uh, let me ask about post-processing and uh, not post-processing, but um, baking. I mean, one thing we don't do is bake, and I don't think we want to, but uh, are there other opinions there?
So I'm baking in terms of um, aspects of lighting, yes. So um, you might bake lighting, um, like, like baked AO in particular, ambient occlusion, I mean. Um, or you'll bake in, um, perhaps some areas do have bake lighting. You know, maybe there's only one time of day for them. I mean, there's different things you can do with lighting with baking, but the assumption I have is we're such a dynamic environment that it's not something that will go over well, but it is something that um, obviously on real res, um, stuff like that. It does seem like that would coexist kind of uneasily with our you know, in-world build capabilities and, you know, people can change anything they want anytime. Uh, to Beck's comment about if we had a flag for static assets, um, I I don't I don't think content creators would check it. Um, I mean, we have the locked flag, but it doesn't really get used. I think the other thing to think about is baking could just be like a static asset in baking AO, for instance. Um, like I look at the trees that we got in the distance here, and I was like, oh, wow, they could use AO. Or maybe I just don't have my graphics settings set right. But there's there's definitely things around that don't have the right um, complexity to them in terms of shadow and light. Yes, the uh, SL ambient occlusion shader is very dated. It was like version 1.0 of uh, back when everybody started putting uh, ambient occlusion uh, into their games. So, so I'm mentioning stuff like this only in to say that I'm personally interested in, and in, in, in so is leadership in just finding ways of uh, figuring out how to ramp up the, the visual fidelity of things. And so um, as we engage with the community, obviously we are interested in doing so in a way that um, everyone feels is the right next steps. Um, so these are just pie in the sky things I'm throwing out there. Please don't take them as, oh, oh my gosh, Second Life is going to do X or it's going to do Y. I, we just want to have a dialogue about stuff. Yeah, I have seen regions that do big lighting. Um, and but without built-in tools it, it's it's not easy um Did you just pick it straight into the textures then or what yeah they basically did a region that was all full bright with baked in lighting um and then would place uh dynamic lights uh to try to mimic uh what the baked lighting was doing for avatars so they wouldn't look totally out of place um that was uh that was mayfair um, and it looked pretty good and it ran okay. Uh, the texture streaming was not happy with it because everything had a unique texture on it. Um, so yeah, a, a material system that has a light map channel, uh, would enable hardcore dedicated artists to uh, bring in stuff from uh, Blender or Maya that's been baked uh, without us even having to make a light mapper. But the adoption rate, there's no telling if, if we'd get a, a lot of people using it.
is there some aspect to the textile density that people can get on the textures as well? I mean, um, I, I can imagine normal maps, and if there, there's not enough density there, then they, they don't look good anyway. But I guess it depends on how they're applied. For sure, the new old content collection. We just want to inspire. Obviously, we want new creations, and um, and you know, creators to have new tools to create, update their existing environments. But you know, I don't think we need to rewrite. Um, there's nothing that's going to automatically make existing environments better. And if we did that, that would be you know, people would complain. Yeah, and on the high res textures, um, that really shouldn't matter what resolution the base asset is, um, because we we stream in just the MIP that that you need. Uh, the place where it uh, it costs is in the the storage side, because um, you know if you give us a you can't right now, but but say you gave us a four K by four K, um, but it only ever shows up. Uh, like 512 by 512 on the screen, then we're only ever going to get that level. But we still have to store the 4K forever. Yeah, good good point, Coffee. That's uh, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah, there would definitely be some changes if we were trying to increase the texture limit. I mean, now I've got a limit of 1K and people just stick a 1K texture on everything. We don't want them doing that with, you know, 2K or 4K or whatever. It seems like they need an overall budget, right? So they can use that budget however they want, but if they have a few small objects that are just a few textures that are ginormous, that's fine. Um. I'm not sure how to manage that though, but is that, is that viable here? Uh, it's tricky. I mean, the, you don't have to define all the textures at the time that you first upload the model, right? You can you can change them after the fact. So basically, any time people are trying to edit texture IDs, you'd have to uh, you know go through kind of an enforcement pass and figure out how big the various textures were. It'll be a little tricky given our current framework where we don't know until we've loaded a texture what its resolution is going to be. Thanks. Yeah, we also charge a, at least I believe, I haven't looked at this in a minute, uh, we charge a flat rate for uploading the texture no matter how big it is. Yeah, that's true. But are, are you saying that fees don't change behavior?
Oh, you are saying that. Okay. Yeah, for something that gets sold in a whole lot of copies, the the you know upload fee, one-time upload cost is is trivial compared to that. Um, the you know the proposal we've had in a lot of previous discussions was to tweak land impact instead, so that that means that there's a kind of a charge that that anyone who tries to use the content is paying. Um, with the added complication that we don't have land impact for avatars, so attachments wouldn't really be affected. And that's where most of the complexity is these days. Yep. Always all about the avatars. Yeah, the the land impact accounting uh, was supposed to incentivize making good LODs. Because um, it basically charged you, like, how many triangles are visible per square meter. Um, and then people gamed it. Yeah, there were some serious exploits with that, especially for rigged mesh. We kind of revised the whole thing for... And a mesh, but it's hard to go back and retroactively change, you know, existing content. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, silly me, I thought people wouldn't want their objects to look like two triangles smashed together in the background. And the thinking was, oh, well, maybe you can, uh, I, is that really fair? Were you forced with that, with the accounting or did you just want to get more stuff on your land and use that as a, as a way to do it? But yeah. And the lowest LOD triangles cost so much because they're the one that's, that's visible over the largest area. They're, they're, they're the lowest LOD is the LOD that matters the most. It's what's seen almost all the time. I'd be willing to take uh, suggestions on how we um, we better encourage you know good LED creation. I mean, I I wish I could just wave my wand and kind of force auto LED generation for all the existing content. Frankly, I mean it's. Uh, I not that it would look great, but it it um it's sad when I enter when I when I buy something and you know these are always broken and it's like I'm just always pissed, you know. There are probably things we could do in marketplace to make it more obvious when the LODs are busted too, but yeah, to to the extent that the the creators are able to sell the idea that um you know the the bad LODs are your fault for not using some setting that makes the LODs invisible rather than the creator's fault for, you know, authoring the LODs in the first place. Um, it, it doesn't encourage changes. Copy my only issue with generated LODs is that, um, you know, artist generated LODs are much, much better looking, much better done. Yeah, the trick is to, if, if you can automatically determine which LEDs are good and which LEDs are bad, then. Yeah, uh, what what Coffee says, we don't really have any. We we have the ability for people to give artists generated LEDs, and and they just don't. They uh, they use GLOD uh, to manipulate land impact. Um, which unfortunately you have to do to compete because 
people buy based on what the land impact is and if somebody's gamed it to make their land impact lower than yours. Yeah. You're people screwed. make people make crap LEDs for their, you know, avatar content too, where land impact doesn't even apply. So I think some of it's just uh I don't know. Established practices rather than being purely driven by, you know, accounting concerns or whatever. Uh, we don't, as far as I know, coffee, we don't track which ones are uploaded from file rather than generated. Um, they, they, they look exactly the same once, once they're uploaded from a data standpoint. All right, well, we are at time for this week, but uh, you know, thanks for everybody coming by, and we'll keep you posted. Hopefully, we'll be getting some new viewers out soon, and in the meantime, please let us know how things go on the on the RCs and the test viewers. This is the last Third Prime viewer for this month, I think, so everyone have a happy break and Christmas. Yeah, I guess that's right. Happy, have a happy new year, and we'll see you uh, see you in a few weeks.